Ford 8F35 8-speed automatic transmission front-wheel drive. This came out of a Transit. A 22 Transit, I believe, with 80,000 miles on it. The concern was that uh, the vehicle would stop moving after driving for a while. When I drove it, it would move forward in neutral and reverse. It would move forward, and it had a pretty horrendous noise in it. Okay. I don't normally see too many catastrophic failures out of these unless it's in a cargo van, so... It's my second time going into an 8-speed 8F35. It is very similar to a 6-speed. My nomenclature might be a little off, like on the A, B, C, D, and E clutches. I'm going to call them forward, intermediate, and direct, and so on. Uh, similar to what I would on a 6-speed, so that'll give you the general idea. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just uh, pull this torque converter out. Tip it over and let it drain. Ooh. That fluid smells like burnt gym socks, like a 55-gallon drum full of used gym socks that were lit on fire with a match and gasoline. Okay. The next thing I'm going to pull off, you don't actually have to take off just for a teardown, but I'm curious. Um, this is a accumulator for the auto start-stop. Fluid pressure accumulator. I just had to put my muscles into it, and I pried over here too, and uh, here it is. It feels like a giant spring's in there. You hear that? <laughs> Probably because there is a giant spring in there. I've got it flipped on its face. Okay. And the next thing I'm going to take off is the cooler here, just to get that out of the way, so I don't damage it any more than I might already have. Um, and this, uh, this is the turbine shaft speed sensor here, also known as an intermediate speed sensor. Uh, it's a very common failure to set codes and cause engagement concerns, so that's like a $14 sensor. It's worth trying if you have TSS or ISS codes. video might get a little long, but, uh, oh well. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> There's these two uh, seals on here. Uh, the actual seal itself, and then the uh, sort of a positioner or blocker or ring whatever you want to call it I just got fluid on me all right I've got it on its hiney now okay I'm gonna go take all these 13 millimeter studs off for the valve body cover all right I'm done being silly fast forward something done let loose in here okay so there's a bunch of eight millimeter bolts you need to take out here here then um all across here i believe one of them is hidden yeah um and there's three different length bolts you need to keep them in the right orientation or keep them in the right position mm. pretty loose. Some of these you might not have to take out. I'm just going to I'm just going to go all at it here <laughs> cuz I'm not familiar. It's been a while since I've taken one of these apart, so I believe that is your transmission fluid pressure sensor. Sometimes there's issues with those. I'm just going to show you all taking them all out. I won't cut this out here. Just a second, almost done. And that one behind here. Almost forgotten to disconnect a couple of things here. Disconnect that and that. Oh, 
All right, you can take that and throw it in the cabbage, okay? Now, there are occasional issues out of these, so I would replace it if there's any kind of failure in the transmission. The main control valve body. Okay, next you get a transfer pipe here, eight millimeter bolt. Whoops. Take that out. I believe this is the OSS, output shaft speed sensor. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> this is going to be a good video. <laughs> I'm take the TSS out now. Just kidding. I've got it on its back, and this is where it's going to stay for the duration of the teardown. And next, I'm going to go ahead and take all the bolts out that hold the two case halves together. Okay? Just the one up there. All right. And now comes the time where we separate the case halves. I'm going to use my Johnson rod here. Okay. Ah. That's normal. Don't worry about that sound. Yeah. Pry on the other side, too. <laughs> Okay, it's popped up all the way around. Now with my left hand, I'm gonna grab here, and my right hand here, pull straight up, and flip this over on its back. Just like that. No extra hassle or anything. It just straight up and flipped over. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Looks like that's your front pump. Oh my goodness. Oh my, look at this baffle, it's all tore up. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, this, oh my. <laughs> this thing is not going to be repairable, I don't think, under warranty. It'll say replace. <laughs> oh my. There's your uh, differential here. There's a little thrust washer, or thrust bearing, I mean. Little sun gear. All right, I'm gonna have to for one more time here. Uh, left hand here, right hand wrapped around here. Pull straight up. And I'm gonna sit those down over there. I know I've got a I've got a GoPro. The quality is not as good as the phone for sh or for sure here. But um, uh, with the uh, phone here, I can edit on the fly, and it's a lot easier to just upload it. But uh, I'll definitely figure something out there because I want uh, more content there. Uh, almost uh, forgot before you pull these uh, straight up here, you're going to want to pull the parking pot out. Get out of there! Oh my goodness. Alright, straight up with these two. Uh, now I'm going to take this destroyed fluid baffle out. Two 8mm bolts. And, ooh, saw some metal fly, fly over there. Um, and now there's this uh, thing here. Uh, oh, oh, a snubber. They call it a chain snubber. <laughs> S-N-U-B-B-E-R. Uh, that's a funny word. It's like a tensioner, almost, or a guide. Next, you've got your high-pressure filter. Okay. It's in here. I got it up with a pick. I just kind of popped it up. There's a cover. It's got an O-ring on it. Here's the canister filter. Woo! 
<laughs> Sorry for the sound effects there. Woo! I've never actually seen one of these before on a... I haven't pulled one out on an 8-speed. That means I'm not doing it right, right? <laughs> no, I've only had one tore down and it was a core, so... And this is probably what this one's going to be as well. Here's uh, seals for the pump here. Actually, it, yeah. Yeah, the pump. See, it goes on here. Looks like the pump's all of this. It's a big pump body. But uh, I'm going to leave those on for now. Okay. But uh, those should come in an overhaul kit. You should replace them. Next time you get this forward clutch snap ring out, you see this uh, snap ring right here? Make sure you index it correctly. Get the, get the uh, gap over here where it was. Where'd the case half go? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, at least we've got room to work now. All right, there's another uh, thrust bearing there. And it's on the sun shell. Ooh, first casualty, the first thing I pulled out. <laughs> Ooh, oh! <laughs> Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> Holy cow. Wow. I wonder if this thing will even go back to... Oh my goodness. Guys, this is a Transit Connect uh, work van, and it was most likely loaded down all the time, so you shouldn't have to worry about this. If you have like a Maverick or something like that. I think next I'm just going to try it with both hands, grab onto the shaft and pull straight up like that off camera here. And if that works, I'm going to sit it straight down like that. <laughs> nope, this thing is locked up tighter than a bank vault. <laughs> but um, in theory now, I mean, you should just be able to slide everything up out of here. But this is, has a major failure in it. And uh, and obviously, uh, it's not going to want to come apart. However, for the video, I want to get this thing apart for you. So give me a second. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, that worked right here. Cooling system hose pick. This thing is completely shot. This whole transmission. Look at all that wear. <laughs> mm. If it weren't for this video, oh my goodness. Wow. This is the hydraulic selectable one-way clutch, and it is just destroyed. If it weren't for this video, I would not be going apart this far, I don't think, because ev everything is just destroyed in this thing. Oh, the bearing's not even moving. <laughs> oh my. I think this is a planetary failure. I think that's the causal part. The primary failure, I mean. I think it's just, I can hear the metal falling out. I think the van has just been overloaded, <laughs> overworked. It's a commercial van. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Let's start making a stack here. You hear all the metal falling? I'm just going to start stacking here instead. Oof, got transmission fluid all over my camera right now. Alright, I'll get it in a second here. There we go. Oh my, look at all that down in there. Okay. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Put that over here. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> okay. Let me, uh. Okay. There's another, uh. 
another sun gear there. There's a sun shell. <laughs> metal going everywhere. Good luck getting this core back together. <laughs> Another bearing, another sun gear, sun shell. And here is the uh, direct and overdrive drum, and the intermediate clutch piston is in the bottom of the stack up here. Oh, very similar to a 6F35. And, oh, and that aspect there. Yep. The uh, style of drum's a little different than the 6F35. It's got a curve right here instead of being flat. I'm going to stick that right there. I'm not going to take the clutches out of there. It's not worth it. <laughs> goes on the bottom. That bearing right there goes right in the bottom here. All right, here's some more clutches for the intermediate. It's also a ply plate there. And uh, that's about it. That's as far as I'm gonna go. I got a messy camera right now. Um, but uh, yeah, as you can see, this thing's just destroyed. I do believe it is from uh, overloading on a work van. Most of you guys won't ever have to worry about this, I don't think, and I do believe it is a planetary failure. Um, which is what caused this so yeah hope you enjoyed this is what the inside of an eight speed looks like um, yeah if you have any questions let me know hope you enjoyed